Live from the Georgia Dome, it's the GHSA Class AAA semifinals between the Doherty Trojans, 12 and 1 from Region 1 AAA versus the Shaw Raiders, also 12 and 1 from Region 2 AAA. This is Game 7 of a great live weekend here on Georgia Public Broadcasting. We've got a great crowd coming into the Dome. The winner of this game will meet Peach County for the state AAA championship next week. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tommy Palmer along with Mark Lassiter set to bring you the action. And we look forward to a great athletic matchup in this one, Mark. Tommy will get the answer of the age old question. What happens when a high powered offense meets a solid and diverse defense? Because these two teams are very athletic on both sides of the ball. Definitely very athletic. This is one of the greatest athletic matchups of this entire weekend. Starting first on Darty's side of the ball, they're one of the leading rushers, Xavier Cheevers, 25 touchdowns so far this season. Their offense totals nearly 5,000 yards for the season. Also on defense, Morell Jones. Now you have a player with a 3.0 average, and he's also one of the fastest players on this team for Doherty. So watch out for Mr. Jones this afternoon. We also ask Coach Wright from Doherty what to expect from his Trojan football team today. Offensively, we want to first of all try to run the ball to establish our running game. And uh, between the tackles, we're not hopeful we can be able to get outside a little bit. Uh, and then if we establish a running game, we can do a little play action and get the ball downfield to our receivers, maybe use the tight end, you know, underneath. Defensively, our base is 4-3. And uh, hopefully we could be able to stop this wing tee, you know, if Shaw uh, might have to bring another man up in the box. But that's primarily what we're going to try to do. Let's take a look at what's going to happen with the Shaw Raiders, Mark. Shaw is all about defense. One of the most unusual stats about this team is that they have six players that average more than 30 tackles per game. Emmanuel Dudley, one of their leaders, six tackles for losses. And that shows you the outside speed that they bring to this ball game. On the other hand, you have Steve Jacobs, nine tackles for losses. Their team, when you look at their numbers, solid tackling from top to bottom. So the Raiders are going to bring the defense. Coach Flowers told us about his Shaw Raiders and what we could expect out of them today. Offensive with basic wing T team, a uh, little bit of misdirection, more inside game and power game, and a little bit of affirmation, a little bit of motion, uh, not a whole lot of trickery, just old-fashioned football. Defensively, we're a 50 team with a little bit of split, and we play a pressure type defense to try to get more people around the football than they can block. Third member of our broadcast team is Gerald Oliveri, and he's down on the sidelines where the action's about to get fast and furious. Uh, thanks a lot, Tommy. Now, we saw Doherty out here in pregame warm-ups, and when you see the team, you notice that a lot of their key players are kind of like this box. They're kind of small and inconspicuous, but you realize it's not about the size because these kids play with a lot of heart. Their defensive ends are kind of small, but they're effective at stopping the run. Their quarterback is small, 5'10", 168, but very effective at throwing the ball. I have Frank Solkowski here, former Prep Sports Plus reporter, and now with the Fox 5 affiliate in Albany, and you can attest to the fact that the size of these kids does not tell the whole story. Well, it's like they say, big things come in small packages. Doherty, not a lot of big Division One prospects, but a lot of talented athletes. You're talking about guys like running back Xavier Cheevers, quarterback Ronnie Nelson, then you got def defensive guys. Uh, th this team's loaded, they're small, but they got a lot of heart, and Karen Wright has this team playing together as a unit. So Now on the other side, Coach Flowers has Shaw playing well as well. They like to run the ball. I talked to him before the game, and he says, if that doesn't work, they're going to run the ball. Tommy, if you're not busy, Mark, why don't you come down here and get some carries. Maybe Coach Flowers will get you in the game. Doherty in white with the burgundy helmets, Shaw in black. Mark, another great spectacle from the Georgia Dome. We have seen some great, great matchups over the last two days. Gotta love the enthusiasm displayed by both fans. Teams are pumped up, we're pumped up. Let's get ready for kickoff. Chandler Anderson will kick it off for the Shaw Raiders. Doherty will send a couple of speedsters Near the goal line, Dominique Sheely and Rico Weiss. High driving kick, Sheely at the five. And Shaw on 
good kick coverage down at the five yard line. Holy smokes, what a start. Kick coverage, as we told you going into the game, a lot of athletes on both sides of the ball. Darty in the shadow of their own goalpost. Ronnie Nelson will call the signals. 90 out of 49 for 1,742 yards, 14 touchdowns, five interceptions over the 13 games. Both of these teams are 12 and 1. They lost early on and then really went on a tear. Nelson, high formation. Straight ahead isolation. Cheevers on the carry. Here's how they line up. The offense, Harbor, Pace, Daniels, Morrison, and Clinton up front. Cheevers, Whitaker, Nelson, Jones, and Sheffield is the tight end. That's Darty offensively. Nelson. Loops and throws to his tight end up at about the 13-yard line. Joseph Sheffield a little behind him up at the 11, Mark. Here's the defense for Shaw. Dudley Melton, the linebacker is very active. Jacobs and Silvera, number 99 for Shaw. If you'll take a look down there, you'll see that the temperatures in the high 90s on the Shaw defense, all four of the down linemen wear numbers in the high 90s. They're not hard to keep up with. Nelson on the draw up to around the nine yard line. Cheevers on the carry. Speaking of that Shaw defense, their linebackers, Matthews and Bowers, who sometimes fills in as a linebacker, both have high tackle averages, but along the line of scrimmage, you really don't have any outstanding stats. They're all very solid technique-wise. Cedric Moss, number two, back to kick it away. Justin Bray, number 17, deep to receive, nice driving kick back near midfield. Got a block at the corner, and then it kind of evaporated. Great speed on kick coverage by Doherty. Doherty out of Albany, Shaw out of Columbus. Now we're going to see Shaw go on the offense, Mark. Nose of the ball will be near the 42 or 43 yard line. Just underway from the spacious Georgia Dome. Cam Greathouse calls the signals. 43 out of 79. 704 yards, five touchdowns, five interceptions. This is a ground-based offense, and the give is to the tailback, number three, Arsenio Williams. And Williams slashes off the left side into the teeth of that Doherty defense, which is cat quick. Offensively for Shaw up front, Pickett, Perez, Davidson, and Kyle, the center is Pitts, number 78. All right, in that backfield, your running backs, Holland and Williams, Bray and Jones, the wide receivers. Biggins is the tight end. Pro set, one wide receiver. Into the 34-yard line. Very close to a first down. Very active Doherty defense over there, Mark. Lamar Holland on the carry. Doherty with Sanders, Kendrick, Blakely, and Bradley up front. Thomas, Nelson, and Jones are your linebackers in the secondary. Moss, Love, Jones, and Cheeks. Third and short yardage. First down, down near the 30-yard line. Shaw with that tremendous surge on third down and short yardage. And the ball's going to come to rest down at around the 31-yard line. We talked about athleticism, Mark. What do you think after the first two or three minutes here? Well, Shaw is a very balanced offensive team. They come into this game with 2,654 rushing yards, 764 passing. So you can see where their emphasis really lies. First down and 10, Cam Greathouse. 
Now makes the strong side the left side. One wide receiver to the left. Beautiful block on the corner. Williams. Out of bounds down near the seven yard line. Number three, Arsenio Williams, displaying why he averages over 6.1 yards per carry. Just uses the foot speed to make a nice move to the outside, evading the tackle of Streeter. Cedric Morris and Streeter. Number two on the sideline, so you have a first and goal coming up now for Dart. On the year, Arsenio Williams, 96 carries, 581 yards, and a very nice six yards per carry average. First and goal from the six. Toss sweep. The pitch to the tailback. Not much there. Forces his way down near the three yard line. Doherty defense. Great support. As you can see from the safety coming from the left side. Great help from the defensive end as well. Excellent job by Lamar Holland. Number five pulling back just at the time. He was about to get called for a holding penalty. Got in the way of traffic. Great footwork defensively that time by Doherty down there. This is no man's land. Second and goal down at the three. Great house marks the signals. Touchdown, Shaw. That was Holland on Lamar, the carry. Lamar Holland, number five, got a good block off that left side and jammed it in there. Nothing fancy. Holland uses that exceptional burst right at the snap of the ball, gets to the line of scrimmage and scores, giving Shaw first blood early in the first quarter. Anderson will attempt the point from placement. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Shaw seven. Doherty, nothing. Very methodical drive. And great blocking on the left side. Touchdown, Shaw. Another look. Key block thrown by number 55, John Lloyd, as you watch from ground level. But the push by the entire Shaw offensive line, when you're driving those defensive linemen into their own end zone, the results are normally going to be positive. Six plays, 46 yards, and it took two minutes and 39 seconds. Holland with a three-yard touchdown run. Anderson now going to kick it away for Shaw. Tommy, this will give their defense a very positive boost. We talked about the offense of Darty coming in. But if you can give Shaw's defense something to play for, now they want to have field position. It should turn out to be a very interesting stand. Watts and Sheely deep to receive. Anderson, high drive and kick. He's going to bounce at the one and go into the end zone. Touch back, and they'll bring it out to the 20. Boy, Shaw just really blew down the field. Two and a half minutes, just a little over two and a half minutes. And that offensive line really asserted itself early, Mark. Players to look for on the Shaw defense, Golson, Grant, Richmond, and Riles. Now, we talked about the law firm sound yesterday. That's a nice sound for a law firm. Golson, Grant, Richmond, and Riles. Riles has 51 tackles. All right. Here comes Nelson. Brings him up in that eye formation with a slot to the left. Rolling, looking to throw. Overthrown up near midfield. Pass was intended for Michael Nelson. Nelson ran a long pattern up and out. He's working against Dewan Menzi, the defensive back who had coverage about five yards behind him. Another fun fact, Tommy, this afternoon, both coaches attended Fort Valley State University. That is an interesting fact, and uh, I wonder if they had any words before the game about the old alma mater. Nelson brings him up, single back set, slot left, one wide receiver to the right. Hands to Cheevers, who crashes off the right side, up to about the 23. The gain was three. Well, let's see, three or either four, let's see. Well, they give it four, so it's third down and six. Third down and six now 
for the Doherty Trojans. They're the champions from Region 1 Triple A. Achievers, 215 rushes, 1,700 plus yards on the year. Nelson rolling right. Looking, throwing, and overthrown up near the 37 or the 38 yard line. Pass intended for number 90, Lavelle Parter. First pressure time, he came from the outside. Linebacker number 34, Jeremiah Goldston. Really put the pressure on to force that pass to be thrown a little bit earlier than they wanted. Fourth down and six. Moss fumbled the snap, running, now kicking. Shaw at the 45. Bray got a block. And several flags. No fear in number 17, Justin Bray on the return. He was looking for daylight, Mark. Excellent recovery by the punter after the high snap from center. One of the players downfield for Darty that felt the wrath of the penalty was Xavier Cheevers. He's one of the outstanding running backs for this team. You don't want to have him hurt on a kickoff team. Definitely not. Penalty's going to be called against Shaw. We will await the official's decision here. Let's see. We have two flags down, so we'll see here. On the return, we have a block in the back on the receiving team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Larry Hobgood, your official. It's the first thing that went wrong was, was with a high snap. The kick, the punt on the run. And at ground level, you'll see number 28 right there. <laughs> that was Cheevers. Great House brings them up. High formation. A surge at the tackle. Great defense over there on the left side by Doherty. Just a straight isolation. Brian White. Here's another look at it. Great form tackling. We've seen that throughout every game here. The 10 teams that make it to the Dome, Tommy, make it for a reason. Solid technique, and we've seen a lot of solid tackling both days. Second down and nine, the game was won. Great house. Gives to the fullback very little there, Lamar Holland. Once again, an excellent surge on the right side by the Doherty defense. Tremendous defense from Quentin Nelson. Nelson wears number 44. Really just stacked up the line of scrimmage from his linebacker position. They weren't able to get a push on him at all. Just held his spot and made a great form tackle. Third down 10. The one thing Shaw does not like to do is throw the football. They like to keep ground possession. They will throw when they need to, but only when they need to. Shaw's going to call timeout with a 7-0 lead. The fans make up much of the excitement at the Dome. Now there's a fan. Shaw, third down and 10. Cam Greathouse. Wayne Wright with one wide receiver. Justin Bray on the carry. And another flag. Excellent block thrown at the point of attack by number 78 center Jarvis Pitts. He's working against Quentin Nelson, the linebacker of Darty. You see the preliminary indication on the penalty against Shaw. Motion. A lot of these teams, Tommy, are really predicated upon the play of their centers. Our referee today, Larry Hobgood, umpire Marcus Marquise Mitchell, Alton Bryant, Tony Watson, Ron Barton, Monty Legal Charette. motion on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's your refereeing crew. And 
Fourth down and five now as the penalty is declined. Anderson getting set to kick it away. And I think we're going to have another timeout. If there's any difference between the two squads, Tommy, Shaw may have a slight advantage in the kicking game. Chandler Anderson that you just mentioned, he averages 42 yards per punt. His longest punt this year, 59 yards. And his longest field goal is 43 yards. Here's how Doherty got to the dome. They beat Troop 49 to 14. Thompson 26 to 7. And last week, Flowery Branch 42 to 3. Looks like an easy road for the Trojans. Shaw got here by beating Crisp 40 to nothing. Perry 34 to 14. And last week, Hart County 28 to 3. Two high-powered offenses and stellar defenses. Anderson back at the 36. Not a particularly good snap. High driving kick by Anderson. Gonna get a Doherty bounce. At about the 26-yard line. So Doherty's gonna go back on offense. Nelson, Jones, Sanders, Cheevers, and the wide receivers. Whitaker. And Sheffield, that big tight end. Tommy, we also sometimes talk about the adjustments playing on field turf. One of the adjustments we don't mention a lot is the actual bounce of the ball on punts. Players have to really get accustomed to that high hop. It is a high hop, and they also tell me you have to really pick your feet up on the surface down there. Nelson rolling to throw under pressure. Now, going to head the other way and be caught and thrown up at about the 26 or 27 yard line. Here you see Nelson rolling and looking. Tremendous pressure from that Shaw front four. Number 90, Emmanuel Dudley was the first player that had a shot at him. Caught him not the first time, but the second time for the Shaw Raiders. 674 yards on the year for Ronnie Nelson. The elusive quarterback, no gain on the play. Second down and 10 from the 26. And Nelson slides as his feet fly out from under him there. Nelson just trying to plant with the right foot. We talk about that field turf and the adjustment, but these two teams are experienced with this type of surface. That time, Nelson just tried to make a sharper cut and fell behind the line of scrimmage. Third down now and just over 10 yards to go. Shaw with a seven point lead. High formation, slot left. Nelson gonna run the option. Got a hole at the left side. Xavier Cheaters. First down yardage and more up at about the 44 yard line. Ben Silvers. And Decon Menzi. Excellent block thrown on the corner by number 85, Michael Nelson for Darty, allowing the runner to get to the outside. And a great read by the quarterback in the true option, waited to the last possible moment to pitch. First and 10, Darty. Nose of the ball up at the 43. Nelson, two-step drop, looks at his big tight end, got him, he breaks a tackle or two. Nelson, Nelson to Nelson. Michael Nelson from Ronnie Nelson, and another first down for the Darty Trojans. Darty's tight ends grayed out very high on blocking, but on the last reception, Michael Nelson shows the ability to get downfield, make a catch in traffic, turn and run upfield. That's number 85, Nelson for Darty. Great strength, breaking tackles, just a quick two-step drop, and the quick pass right over the linebackers of Shaw. First and 10, Nelson again, right over the linebackers, out of the backfield to Joseph Sheffield from the left side. And Nelson has found his mark as far as what he's going to do with the football. He's going to make that Shaw defense adjust, Mark. Tommy, you make a great call because all he's doing is getting beyond the line of scrimmage just over 
the outstretched arms of Steve Jacobs at defensive line position for Shaw. Once you get a runner into the secondary, another first down. Too hey, hard. Nelson, two-step drop. Nothing there. Now going to run. Looking deep. Got a man in the end zone. Can't get it to him. Looking again for Lowell Parker, number 90, the wide receiver who was trying to get open, coming across the back part of the end zone back there. Nelson got flushed out. I really thought he was in big trouble back there, but great quickness and great movement of his feet. If you'll watch him, he gets flushed out. Give credit to the entire Darty offensive line for staying with their blocks as long as they could while the quarterback is trying to improvise and find a player deep downfield. Took a shot at the end, though. Hard to do for a quarterback to throw across the body, but Nelson at least got out of imminent danger. Nelson looks over that four-man front. Quick drop, looking inside. Got the tight end again. Down at about the seven-yard line. It's Michael Nelson once more. Michael Nelson, after throwing that crushing block, two great receptions. The pass is coming right into your living room. Nelson on the reception in very strong hands, picks up another seven to eight yards after the catch. Folks, that's not a lob over the linebackers. That's a bullet right to Nelson from Nelson. Listed at 6'1", 185. All right, Darby down there knocking on the door. Inside the five. Formation power on Cheevers tailback touchdown. Cheevers across the right side follow great blocking down there. Nothing fancy. Cheevers demonstrating why he comes into this game with 25 rushing touchdowns. Total. 1,719 for the season and 158 points. So Cheevers with the score. Haywood Foggy to kick it away. He's a straight on kicker. A great kicker. The kick is up and the kick is good. Well, just like we called it, Tommy, we give all the praise to the Shaw defense, but it's the offense. Oh, man. You talking about a surge. Look at this. Hello. Touchdown. That was a very great drive by Doherty. Excellent surge by that offensive line of Doherty. And as we mentioned, Tommy, sometimes the unexpected happens. Look at the numbers. Seven plays, 73 yards in only three minutes on that last drive for Doherty. And Nelson brought out a new bag of tricks. Shaw had lined up and rolled the linebackers up close. And Nelson obviously was checking off at the line of scrimmage or had changed his entire operation there because he got three or four great passes to the tight ends, which carried them down the field. Michael Nelson, the tight end, as you mentioned, earned a few gold stars on that last drive. He wears number 85 for Darty. Haywood Foggy will kick it off. He's going to lay the ball down at the 40. So we got a new ball game at 7. Foggy, swift kick, bounces and bounces and bounces. Picked up by Gray back at about the 18 and trouble at the 11. Nowhere to run. Justin Bray. Tretavius Love on the tackle. We ask Coach C. Wright what was special about this year's team. Oh, the special thing about this is the group of young men, our seniors, we got a large senior class that's been together for a while, 32 seniors. And they provided great leadership along with all uh, this coaching staff that worked long and hard hours to, to get us here. We got excellent support from our administration and, and our parents and our community. So we got a lot to play for. We're just glad to be here. Great house on the handoff on first down. Pretty good surge over there by the Shaw offensive line. The give was to number five, Lamar Holla. The game was three, second down and seven. It's amazing the athletic ability of these high school players. Speed on both sides of the ball today, especially the sideline for Shaw. 
Great house. Brings them up. Slot formation. Great house. Going to try to run the option. Going to turn it up himself and get a block on the corner. Here's Great house. He's got a convoy, folks. Great house. 84 yards. Can you say answer the challenge? Once Great House hit the corner at about the 20 yard line, picked up, as you mentioned, two additional blockers that he did not need as he just opened up the Jets at the 40 and scooted all the way down the sideline for the quick and sudden score for the Shaw High School Raiders. Anderson will attempt the point from placement. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Shaw, 14, yardy seven. When he, when he makes it to the perimeter, great move there, another great move. Now he got a block, and it's downhill from here, folks. Trust me. First block was thrown by number five, Lamar Holland, actually allowing him to get to the sideline. But the rest, as you look at the ability to play off the block, make first and the second cut. Blocks really aren't heavy-duty blocks, but they did just enough to get in the way and allow Holland to make the score. Great house. Great house. Oh, what a, what a great run, yeah. That's the kind you like, folks. Two plays, 87 yards. One minute and 11 seconds. Great house, 84-yard run. Anderson to kick. Back deep to receive for Doherty. Rico Watts and Dominic Sheely both back at the 10. Anderson driving kick, which is going to hit and bounce back. Rico Watts let the ball hit. I think he thought it was going to go in the end zone. But it bounced back and kicked back up into his arms. Let's go down to the sidelines, Gerald Oliveri. Well, thanks a lot, Tommy. Now, of course, the Bulldogs are going to play Tech today, but the Bulldogs aren't the only people that got a chance to play over between over there at Georgia Tech today. Doherty actually went over there and practiced on that field so they could get ready. Shaw said they didn't practice anywhere because they'd already played in the Grange and they have the same field that's here in the Georgia Dome. Back up to you, Tommy. Thank you, Gerald. Ronnie Nelson brings them up from the shadow of their goal post. He drops and throws, and the linebacker or defensive end deflects the ball up near the line of scrimmage. Emmanuel Dudley got a hand up. Number 90. Watch this. Coaches teach working off blocks. Dudley at the last minute with the spike on the pass. Great slap. Here comes Nelson again up at the... Let's see, they mark it at the eight yard line, I think. Nelson going to do the toss sweep to Cheevers. Very little, if anything, there. The Raider defense, Tommy, very balanced. They have eight defensive touchdowns this season. They've got to be feeling exceptionally good about themselves after that last score as well. Defense has them pinned back inside the red zone. Ben Silvers on the stop. We've played one at the Georgia Dome. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome. Tommy Palmer along with Mark Lassiter as we have enjoyed a great first quarter. Shaw 14 and Darty 7. Had a little of everything. A lot of offense. A lot of defense. And the defense that we thought would come from Shaw really comes from Darty. We talked a lot about both teams and their strengths. And the idea that Doherty is behind 14-7 was a little bit of a difference what we expected. Shaw, 14-7, had the big long run and the, the kind of uh, quarter you like. Shaw, 130 yards. Doherty with a total of 82 at the end of one. Third down and nine. Nelson brings him up. Rolling to Rock breaks a tackle. Has some room and much more. 
Nelson 30 breaking tackles up to the 37 yard line Ronnie Nelson before he's brought down by Dequan Menzi number 21. Demetrius Jackson number one actually gets into the backfield and has a shot at the quarterback but keeping his legs moving just peels out of the tackle and picks up additional yards right there and picks up another 15 yards. You remember we told you early on if you were going to characterize this game by one term it would be athleticism that was an individual effort great blocking up front as well first down and 10 just a straight ahead give to Cheevers who cracks up across the 37 up to maybe the 38 yard line Dominique short on the stop there a number bit of a, two bit of a surprise Tommy because the three defensive backs for Shaw Jackson short and Bowens Jackson has 36 tackle short 29 and Bowens 28 so they've got decent numbers yes they do second down and eight Shaw leading 14 to seven the winner of this one plays Peach County High School for the state AAA championship next week Nelson gonna run the option great timing on the option to Cheevers got a block and now he's gonna head down the sidelines and be knocked out of bounds at the 32. Nelson reads the option about as well as you'll find a high school quarterback read the option. He'll take that shot at the end of the play anytime makes a ball fake waits till the last minute comes down the line reads the penetration perfectly and gets the ball to Cheevers. True option great fake to the fullback holds the linebackers the defensive end comes at him the pitch at the perfect moment Cheevers, Cheevers also displaying the lost art of the stiff arm at the end of that last run gave him an extra five yards Darty trying to answer the long Shaw touchdown just a few moments ago two wide receivers pro set high formation fake to the fullback Nelson looking for his wide receiver down at about the eight yard line Lavelle Parker the intended receiver down there good coverage Nelson trying to zip it on first down and it's second down now and 10 working against cornerback Demetrius Jackson for Shaw had him open by about three yards but just overthrew him Nelson has shown us that he is certainly capable of running the football and he certainly can throw it the short pass as well as the deep pass and what coach C Wright is showing us Tommy is the ability to compile plays in a sequence because he's using that option play to set up the passing game for Doherty if you establish the option it really works on a defense if the linebackers can't sit there and just load up on you and most teams aren't two dimensional they'll either be strong in one or the other Doherty is showing strength at both true pro set with a slot to the left high formation Nelson looks over a four man front gonna fake look to throw out of the backfield complete breaking tackles down to the 20 goes Ernest Mason I'll tell you you have to go give coach C Wright a whole lot of credit here he has really put a variety of offensive plays into this sequence here Nelson with the fake and the completion that was Bruce Riles number 30 from Shaw had the first shot at him Steps out of that tackle, picks up another five yards. First down, 10 Darty. Down there at the red zone. Two wide receivers, eye formation. Nelson looks over the four man front. Rolling in trouble. No whistle. No whistle. I'm not sure he touched the ground. He did a nice spin move down there. I don't think he touched the ground. No, he did not. Touchdown, Doherty. Ronnie Nelson with a 20-yard touchdown run. What a tremendous athletic move Ronnie Nelson made going to his left. The curious part of that play, Tommy, 
his offensive lineman, Jerome Morrison, number 66, even pulled up on the block. Haywood Foggy to attempt the point after. Good snap. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Doherty 14, Shaw 14. So Doherty answers the Shaw touchdown, and we've got us a football game. Look at this tremendous move. Morrison, number 66 to the left of your screen, pulls out, and you can see on your screen whether his knee touched down or not. But there was no whistle. Play continued, and Darty gets the benefit of a touchdown. Judge McCall, and in high school, no instant replay. No whistle. And you're taught to play until you hear the whistle. Excellent point. And it was interesting to note even the Darty players pulled up, expecting that the runner had been called down, and it had an influence on the Shaw defense. Foggy will kick it off for Darty. Justin Bray, the single safety back at about the seven-yard line. Note the position of the football on the kickoff. Laying it flat, squib kick. This thing really causes teams problems. Squib kick, gonna bounce and bounce, and you have to pick it up whether you want to or not. Back at the 13, great coverage by Doherty, breaking tackles. Brian Willis, number 20, on the return, back to the 19. One of the first players downfield was number 82, Jamie Williams for Darty. They had excellent coverage, as you mentioned, Tommy, but weren't able to wrap up where they wanted another 10 yards on the return. I tell you, when you lay that ball down flat, it really starts bouncing funny down there, and it's just very difficult to make a decision. Do I pick it up? Do I take a chance on letting it go out of bounds? And that time, number 20 had to pick it up and run with it. I formation as Greathouse. Cam Greathouse, number four, brings them up. Two wide receivers to the right eye formation. The give is to the tailback, Arsenio Williams. It's amazing what an offensive touchdown will do for a defensive unit's efforts back on the field. Trevorius Thomas on the stop. The one, game was won. One footnote is the ball fake that Cam Greathouse made after that play. He executed the fake to the near sideline, setting up another play deeper in the playbook. Greathouse now moving receivers around. I formation, basic pro set. Greathouse now gonna run the reverse. Got a block at the corner, but great pursuit that time by the Doherty defense. Now this is picked Justin. by numbers. Watch the offense. Great House makes one ball fake and then to the second runner. There's the fake. There's the handoff. Now we've seen two steps in the same play, Tommy. Expect now they could possibly work off a third option of the same play. Demetrius Kendricks on the stop. Nothing fancy, but coaches kind of paint by numbers with their offenses. They build it step by step. Much like Darty did on their last touchdown drive, building on the offense. Now the strong side goes to the right side on third down and five. And Shaw's going to jump off sides. Well, that's not how it's painted up. And a little bit of and a flag. temper down on the field. And wisely, wisely one of the Shaw offensive linemen separates his teammate. Third down. And it's going to be a bundle here. Kyle and Perez. There could be two different flags on this play call, Tommy. One on the motion, and the second on the emotion after the play. That's true. We're going to get one on the motion, and I'm sure we're going to get one on the emotion as well. Third down and five was the previous play. Here's the motion. Here's the emotion. The motion against Shaw and the emotion against Doherty. So we'll penalize the five and then go back and penalize the 15. And Shaw will have it first down. And Shaw was fortunate 
that their linemen were able to gather themselves and not react to the second penalty flag. I thought they jumped in in a hurry and did a great job of separating the two players there. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards penalty. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, 15 yards. And what's interesting about this setting, Tommy, is you're playing with so much emotion. These players are on the spotlight. They're in a new facility, and you hope that the leaders on these teams get control anytime there's an opportunity for something to flare up. And Shaw was fortunate to have their leaders step in and separate the players. First down 10 now up at the 34 yard line. A break for Shaw. Pro set with a wing to the right. And the give is to the tailback Williams. Number three, nothing there. And a flag goes down. I think we're going to get another personal foul on this one. Getting a little chippy down on the field as Arsenio going to play. Let's wait on the official's call here. He stopped for about a five yard loss. The Shaw sideline very cool and collected. This particular drive of Shaw's. Dead ball. Delay throwing the ball to the ground. Five yards. I believe they're going to tack that on to the loss, won't they? And coaches won't mind the physical errors. What will drive them nuts are the mental errors that players will make you can see Coach Flowers on the sideline talking to his player. This is not going to be a memorable Shaw drive. This one won't go down in the history books here unless something really good happens. Second down and a bundle, about 21. Shaw is going to call timeout here. Shaw 14, Doherty 14, and Shaw's got one timeout left in the first half. Needless to say, Mark, a little dissipation in the offensive flurry here. The defense has been very good on both sides of the ball, and I think probably this is a well-advised timeout by the Shaw coaching staff. You also want to get control of your team emotionally once the error started to pile up, not based on physical miscues, but you had the offensive motion penalty, then you had the unsportsmanlike conduct, and then the throwing down of the ball. Second down and 21. The ball's down on the 23. A wing right with a wide receiver to the left. Great house going to fake, roll, throws in and out of the hands of his tight end coming across the middle up at the 31-yard line. Excellent coverage downfield provided by number 44, Quentin Nelson, the linebacker, one of those linebackers we talked about at the top of the broadcast. For Darty. Bruce Figgins, the intended receiver, had great coverage down there by the Doherty defense. It's third down and long. You got to have a great play in your playbook to solve this third down and 21 dilemma, Mark. Great House has the ball fake that he used on previous plays to set up and provide time to get the ball deep. Great House looks over that four man front, going to run the little inside trap. Very little there as Jason Bray, number 17, sticks it up in across the 25 to the 26. All in all, probably one of those situations where you're just glad nothing exploded down there and you can get the opportunity for Anderson to come in and kick it away. Shaw is known for its defense. As you mentioned, they could like nothing better at this point to get their offense off the field to regroup and let their defense go to work. Lavelle Parker back to receive at the 40 along with Robert Sanders. Good snap. Fairly decent kick that's going to hit. Take a Shaw bounce. Man, that thing will roll on this turf. Down to the 27-yard line. So based on the situation that transpired, not a bad field position exchange by Shaw and Doherty there, Mark. Midway through the second quarter, expect Shaw to see if they can get some inspiration from their defense. They come into this game having scored eight defensive touchdowns. Doherty 
Sending Ronnie Nelson the quarterback out on the field. We're midway through the second quarter. 14 14 the winner of this one plays Peach County next week for the triple A championship. True pro set with an eye. Nelson looks over a five man front and they run the isolation to Xavier Cheevers number 28 who slashes up across the 30. Gain of about four on the play. Shaw had three players at the point of attack led by number 91 Steve Jacobs who had the running back at about the 27 yard line but they all three of them whiffed on the tackle a four yard gain. Second and six same offensive set once more it makes you wonder did they try to set up something going to run the option now Nelson's going to follow through got the first down and more up across a 41 that's another phase of the option and that's the one where Nelson keeps the ball after faking to the fullback excellent call Tommy Ronnie Nelson nothing fancy sees the line of scrimmage works down the line and just picks his way straight ahead and picks up enough for first down look at the black shirts coming at the end of that play first down and 10 up at the 40 yard line Nelson dropping looking throwing little hitch pass got his receiver out there another first down as Parker pulls it in up at about the 49 and again makes a nice spin move to throw off the defensive back first down and 10 for Doherty and quite honestly if you had to say momentum offensively the last two times Doherty has touched the ball mark momentum has been with their defense with, with their offense give credit to number 90 Lavelle Parker for being in sync with his quarterback three step drop by the time he turned he was open in space Nelson with a single setback slot to the left wide receiver to the right going to run the option to the short side and a gain of about five to Cheevers that outstanding running back they're trying to isolate him one on one against a Shaw linebacker gain of five excellent call to the short side of the field another footnote on Cheevers Tommy he has seven receptions for 114 yards so they are not afraid to get him out of the backfield and use him as an extra receiver we can call it second and five but uh, in terminology it's a short five to a football player if they look over at the flags over there I like that a long five as opposed to a short five there is a short five trust me I formation the give is to the tailback Cheevers again and there's absolutely nothing there as the Shaw defense Jeremiah Golson clogged that one up Golson wears number 34 you can see him adjusting the pads anytime you have one of those hitters they want to hit enough and hard enough that they pop those buckles underneath the shoulder pads Golson number 34 look at the stars on the helmet he just sticks it up in there would not be blocked now it's a normal five third down and five I formation slot to the left Nelson going to run the option and follow the fullback through once more and be very close to the first down he may be a little bit shy he's just following the fullback in there and ironically the fullback is blocking after the fake Jeremiah Goldson once more on the tackle now this is an interesting call coming up a fourth and about a half yard to go for the first down for Darty. they've had excellent success on this drive Tommy right in the middle of the field first decision for the sideline fourth and very short they've got to get the ball down to the 42 for the first down three wide receivers one single setback Nelson quarterback sneak and I'm relatively sure he got the ball down to the 41 yard line great line surge by that Doherty front wall Shaw only had three down linemen unusually wide splits at the line of scrimmage expecting their linebackers to fill see the up lineman right in the middle of the screen all they did was pilot right in the space to pick up an apparent first down I love the look of Nelson not just stopping at the first point of contact he went second and third effort to get that first down first down and 10 now at the 36 yard line offset eye formation quite unusual Nelson rolling looking to throw chased now running out in the open field and down to the 31 Nelson had a man deep 
But just as he was setting up the throw, Tommy looked like his right foot seemed to slip just a bit. Rather than take the chance on throwing that ball off balance, he tucked it down, tried to run for it, picked up about four yards. Emmanuel Dudley from behind on the tackle. Nelson creates great problems for a defense, Mark. He can run, he can throw, he can option as well as any high school quarterback I've seen in quite some time. That was an excellent decision on the previous play not to force the ball. Exactly. Second down and six at the 32. Going to run the draw to Cheevers. He's down close to the first down. you got to love the pitch fake setting up the draw play. Again, Darty awfully close to another first down. This is your basic sprint draw. This is what you call your basic sprint draw out of the eye. Watch the subtle fake. There it is. Wonderful. Fake with the ball. Let him see where the ball is. And now Mr. Cheevers with the ball. Thank you very much as Roderick Winston makes the stop. The bonus is he gets a key block from Ernest Mason, number 33, the player he made the ball fake to. Mason cuts it up into the line of scrimmage and gets a helmet on a player. Very close to a first down, and we're going to measure here. Mark, I tell you, I have been really impressed over the last 10 or 12 minutes with this Doherty offense that in the early going maybe had to get its legs under it. But man, the last two or three times they've touched the ball here, they've they've been outstanding with just a variety of plays. They're showing solid technique and just enough diversity to keep the Raiders off balance. Well, there's one thing that Shaw's defense is not going to be able to do, and that's put eight men in the box and sit there and wait on them to run the ball. Nelson is too deadly at the corner. He can also throw the ball. Plus, Cheevers, the tailback, what an athlete. He was a slashing type runner coming back through on the sprint draw just moments ago. First down and 10 at the 26. Darnie down there knocking on the door again. Nelson dropping straight back to throw, flushed out of there. Nelson, 15, 10, got a block, touchdown. A great block from Parker down in the corner. Ronnie Nelson, that was not a draw, but it didn't get any better than that if you run a draw. Well, I will say this. Number 20, Brian Willis of Shaw had the quarterback in his sights and basically fell victim to one of the great moves that you'll ever see from a quarterback. Man, what a run by Nelson. Haywood Foggy to attempt the point from placement. Good snap. Kick is up, and the kick is good. Impressive drive by Doherty. 21 to 14. One Watch more time. This. Watch the block by Parker. Lavelle Parker with the block. Watch this right here. Just missed it. Yeah, we did. Let's see from this angle. Watch this. Nelson sees daylight. Number 20 in your screen says, what you talking about, Willis? And takes the left foot away. There it is. Just saw the glancing block coming back across. That opened the door. Nelson goes in for the touchdown. Here we go. One more look at it. That dip. This was guy, the move. This guy can go. You Some, only saw the helmet fly by. You know what's interesting? Sometimes players can make very gaudy moves on running plays, but sometimes it's those subtle moves that players can make at full speed, as described in that last run, setting up the touchdown. Ten plays, 73 yards, five minutes and 17 seconds, and if you're Doherty, that's exactly what you want to happen. If it's Shaw, you don't want him to have the ball that long because that's how Shaw wins football games is long time consuming drives. Just under a minute left in the first half and what a first half it has been. Haywood Foggy will again lay the ball down and kick it and it bounces and bounces and bounces and rolls. Dare pick it up. No, just fall on it says Justin Bray number 17. I don't know that I've ever seen a kicker perform so admirably on the pooch kicks and laying the ball down. Shaw has had great trouble in picking the ball up here. It's almost like a Keystone Cops type of play, Tommy. You kick the ball flat and just try to create chaos in the return team, and they've taken advantage of it. That is Shaw not being able to handle those kickoffs and do anything on the return. Well, Foggy's kicks have definitely not been kind to Shaw's field position here in the second quarter. 
Sam Greathouse brings him up. Gets to the first man through, gaping hole, and a slip down at the 18-yard line. Lamar Holland on the quick trap. There was a gaping hole there. Time definitely a factor here. Up at the 19. One thing Shaw does have is speed from the running back position. Holland, as you mentioned on the previous play, got just a sliver of daylight, picked up another first down. Running in the play from the sideline, Antonio Bailey. Great house. Looks over that four man Doherty front. Gonna run the sweep to the left side and be caught and thrown up at about the 25. Arsenio Williams on the carry. Obviously, Shaw content to go in here with the 21 to 14 halftime deficit. We are at halftime. Doherty 21, Shaw 14. Let's go down to the sidelines and Gerald Oliveri. Thanks a lot, Tommy. I'm here with Coach C. Wright. That was a big touchdown last minute ago. To yeah. Make the score 21. Yeah, when you're in the dome and you plan a team as good as Shaw, the well coached team by Charles Flower, with any touchdown you get is big. Now, I know a big thing for you is discipline. How would you assess the way your team has been playing? Uh, they play well. You know, they done good. The first time being here, a little jittered there at first or whatever, but we just tell them to be patient, stay in there, let's play our game, and we like what happened. Okay, well, good luck in the second half. Thanks. Back up to you, Tommy. It's time for some bands.
Let's go down to Gerald Oliveri. Thanks a lot, Tommy. Right now I'm here with Darren Johnson, band director for the Phantom Trojan Marching Band. And your band looked really good out there. And I understand they've received a lot of superior rankings. Could you just talk about some of the performances that your band has been in? Well, our band has performed all over the state and abroad, uh, performing in uh, Panama City. We perform locally uh, here in Atlanta, uh, Florida. We've done a lot of performances. You know. I understand that they perform level five and six band literature. What exactly does that mean? Well, a symphonic band uh, plays level five and six. That's collegiate level, professional level of band literature. Uh, our band broke, is broken out to um, the advanced players. You know, symphonic band is primarily uh, juniors and seniors and a few gifted freshmen. You know, so uh, it's real good that they play a level of music. You know. We've got a good music program at Dort High School. All right, well, thanks a lot, Mr. Johnson. Right now, the score is 21 to 14. Doherty is up. We are back. We're Doherty lead shot half, 21 to 14. Now let's go down to the field and enjoy the Shaw High School Sound of Silver marching band under the direction of Marcy Hankins.
let's go back down to the field here once more, Gerald Oliveri. Gerald? Thanks a lot, Tommy. I'm here with Marcy Hagen, band director for The Sound of Silver. Now, you've been the band director for four years, so that means you were here in 2002. How does it feel to be back here with the team performing in the Dome? It's wonderful. We, I, we have enjoyed this season so much, and the kids have looked forward to this game since the beginning of the season. Now, I understand you allow the kids to have a lot of input into what they play. Exactly how much input and what have they done? The percussion feature that we performed was composed by our drumline captain, Mike McCoy, and the vice president for the band, Jeff Edwards. The uh, color guard feature was choreographed by Tiffany Hunter and Erica Marchand. Um, I believe as much stock as they can put into the show, the more pride they're going to have in it. They're a vital part of putting this show together, and I want them to have as much as they can into it. Well, the show did sound good, and we appreciate you, and I'm glad to have you back. We'll pass it back up to you, Tommy, get ready for the second half. Thank you, Gerald. Great, great look at the first half highlights here. Let's take a look at them as we have, shh, we have the 21-14 Darty lead. Shaw drew first blood. Short run down to the goal line. Darty answered with a Cheever's touchdown from short distance and here was the one that just took everybody's breath in the dome. Camp Great House. Mighty Mighty just let it all hang out down the sideline for the score. Great House to the house. A long run by Great House. You felt momentum at that time. Had to be with Shaw but look what happens. Ronnie Nelson takes control of the game. Watch very carefully as he spins out of the grasp of the would-be tackler into the end zone for the touchdown. And then, not one, but two from Mr. Nelson. Watch this move. Ronnie Nelson. Let's go back down to Gerald Oliveri on the sidelines. Thanks. Gerald. Thanks, Tommy. I'm here with Coach Flowers. Now, in the pregame, you said football is like a war. And you struck first, but they struck back. How would you assess the first half? I mean, uh, we struck first and then they came back. It's, uh, you got two good football teams here. And we knew we were in for a battle from the very beginning. They're doing a great job of running the option. They're doing a great job of taking away some of the things that we're doing. And uh, we're not performing very well right now, but um, we're going back to our basic fundamental football and try to do what we do best. And that's try to run the football and see if we can't slow them down a little bit. All right, well, good luck in the second half, Coach Flowers. Let's send it back up to Tommy. We're back at the Georgia Dome where Doherty leads Shaw at the half, 21-14. to 14. Man, what a great first half, Mark Lassiter. Great look at Charles Flowers leading his team back on the field. For the, the interesting thing about this is these are both good programs. They've been state champions in their respective classifications. They were playing before Doherty back in 98, Shaw the 4A champions in 2000. As Shaw receives the opening kick, Tommy expect them to try to establish the running game. The first drive in the third quarter is going to be a key momentum builder, if you will, for the Shaw Raiders to see if they can get their running backs into space, pick up a few first downs. This is amazing. We were talking about the kicks that were laid down. Doherty starts at its on 13-yard line the last three times. Holy smokes, that's effective kicking, and guess what? Here it comes again. Keystone Cops time once again. Foggy with the kick. Now going to be picked up and returned up to about the 35 by Antonio Bailey. What a hit on Bailey up at the 35. That was number 82, Jamie Williams of Darty on the hit, on oh. the kickoff. The ball dribbles downfield. Watch number 82. Right there. Hello. Nice to see you today. <laughs> oh, my. Good that morning. One, that, good one will, that one will feel good tomorrow. Trust me. First down and 10. Wide receiver to the right and a wing set to the left. Coach Flowers wants to do what they do, which is run the football. Lamar Holland on the initial carry for a gain of about two. Doherty still sticking with that four-man front, just four down linemen who are very athletic. If you will look at the numbers of the Doherty down linemen, you'll find that obviously they're not linemen. It looks like linebackers or converted tight ends. If you'll look across, you'll see the low numbers, and you generally don't see that on a defensive line. So very athletic people across that front line, especially those two guys on the outside. 
42 and 21. Look at these guys. One goes strong side, one goes weak side. Double wing formation for Shaw. Second down and eight. Motion in the backfield and the toss sweep. And the corner comes up to Reed. Mr. Bray on the toss sweep. Give Jamal Lavin number 36 an A for his reading ability and the hitting ability right on the corner. Stopping the runner, Justin Bray dead in his tracks. No gain. They go back to the huddle, I promise you. Bray says to the quarterback, can you get the pitch to me just a bit sooner? Big play call for Shaw right here, Tommy. A third down early in the third quarter. Third down and six. Wide receiver to the left, wing to the right. Greathouse dropping the throw, flushed out of there. And going to be stuck and downed at about the 37-yard line. Loss on the play. Nowhere to run in that great coverage downfield. Linebacker Quentin Nelson, number 44, did an excellent job. You'll see him drop into coverage and then hold space, get in on the tackle for Darty, bringing up the fourth down call, exactly what Shaw did not want to have happen, an early three and out. Anderson back at his 23 to kick it away, deep to receive for Darty. Twin safeties back at the 23. Good snap. Anderson takes his time. The ball bounces high off of the surface and will be down at the 32-yard line where Doherty now goes on offense. This is a key point in the ball game for the Shaw defense to assert themselves. Doherty has maintained control over the last six or eight minutes of the football game in the second quarter with the two unanswered scoring drives. This is a key point in the ballgame for the Shaw defense. First two possessions, two punts. Last three, three touchdowns. Need I say more? Credit the play calling of head coach C. Wright. Let's watch a sequence on this series. Wide slot to the left. Pro set, eye formation. Fakes to the fullback. Does Nelson. Follows him through the hole. Gain of about two. Bert Shivers and Jeremiah Goldson. Boy, we have called Goldson's number and Silver's number several times today. They're very active on that defensive front for Shaw. And Goldson doesn't tackle. He hits, and he hits with an attitude. There's a difference between tackling and hitting. There is a large difference. Second down at about eight now from the 34-yard line. Nelson looks over a five-man front. I formation, two wide receivers, two-step drop, little hitch pass into traffic. Flag down. Chris Bowers, number seven in coverage, got underneath the receiver. Michael Nelson. Nelson, a name who he's we called his name a lot this afternoon, just a little bit early. Interference going to be called. That keeps the Doherty drive alive. I tell you, you have to be impressed about one thing. Nelson does not take long to decide where he's going with the football, and when he delivers, he delivers it. Pass interference on the defense. That's 15 yards, automatic first down. Doherty with the ball and the lead. The contention was there was a tip before the hit. First down and 10. <laughs> Again, a judgment call from the 49. Doherty to Cheevers from Nelson up across midfield into Shaw territory. And you kind of keep feeling Doherty asserting themselves offensively here. In on the stop, Golston. Golston once again for Shaw early in this ball game. Look at the shoulder pads. You can see the scars on his jersey. They try to patch those up during the off week. All you can do is send them to the tailor and say, see what you can do with this hole. Second down and eight. Wide slot to the left. Eye formation. Nelson going to run the sprint draw to Cheevers, who's going to crack down to about the 45. That was a play that was effective for them. They ran it once in the first half when they run the sprint draw. Cheevers on the carry. Goldson and Matthews on the stop third and once more 
A short five or a long four, whichever you prefer there, Mark. Excellent read by Matthews. As you mentioned, he wears number six for Shaw, one of the linebackers, very active linebackers. They're going again with that three down lineman setup, allowing the extra linebacker the freedom to roam the line of scrimmage. Third and four. Wide slot to the left. Two down linemen now. Go back to three. Going to run the option is Nelson. Followed the fullback through after the fake. And very little there. Now, if you're Doherty, do you kick him deep in a hole? Yes, you do. They're sending the kick team out there. Jeremiah Goldson has really been a workman on that defensive side of the ball, Mark. Bray back to receive for Shaw. They don't want to be trapped too close to the red zone. Cedric Moss will kick it away. Bray back deep to receive at the 10. Good snap. No rush. High kick. Bray thinks about a fair catch, pulls his hand back down. Good coverage by Doherty and field position once more. Shaw starting back at their own 14. It is so difficult to drive it 86 yards every time you get it. And when we get into a, a game of field position, you got to say for the last two quarters thus far, Doherty has maintained field position in this battle. The question, Tommy, is how stubborn will head coach Charles Flowers be with sticking to the run offense before he opens up? They're pinned at the 14-yard line. Wide receiver to the left, two setbacks, Cam Greathouse. Looks over that four-man front. They run a stunt on that left side, and there's absolutely nothing there. Tyree Blakely cracks down Lamar Holland. Blakely, as a down lineman, shoots the gap, gets into the backfield, joined by two other of his mates. Joseph James, number 26, in on the play also for Darty. He is healthy, isn't he? Look at his helmet. He's been in some wars, too. It's that big scratch along the top of it. He's proud of that one. Don't you dare polish my helmet, he says. Four down linemen for Doherty. Now the strong side of the field to the left. One wide receiver to the left. Great house. Is to his running back. Very little there. Arsenio Williams tries to go left side. Obviously, Coach Flowers is going to stick with the run here. Back at his own 14 or 15 yard line. Robert Sanders on the stop for Doherty. Third down and eight. Doherty's defense, Tommy, came in with three defensive touchdowns. They're showing the ability on the first two drives of the second half to really get to the line of scrimmage and dominate the Shaw running game. Third down and seven. Nose of the ball up at the 17-yard line. Slot to the left, two setbacks. One out of five for Doherty, one out of four for Shaw on third down. Going to run the draw to Arsenio Williams. Absolutely nothing there. The Doherty defense collapses. Team speed for Doherty. Their linebackers were set about four to five yards off the line of scrimmage, but at the snap of the ball, they were able to close like a bunch of mats and just get on to the, to the tackle. Morell Jones on the stop. The little sprint draw right up the middle. It opens. And there, then and it, it closes. closes. In a hurry. Jones really knocked him down hard. Fourth and five. Sanders and Parker. Anderson to kick it away. High driving kick. Got to bounce near midfield. And get that bounce and roll. And they're not about to touch it until it stops. 21 to 14, Darty over Shaw. We've played almost eight minutes in this third quarter. And that's what happens when you get into a ground game. The clock gets away from you. Darty's defense on the old bait and switch, Tommy. You think there's some space there, you go for it, and all of a sudden you get to the line of scrimmage and there's nothing. Coach C. Wright really got his handle on things over there. Team speed. Yes, two wide receivers, eye formation. Tight end side of the field, of the strong side to the short side. Nelson looks over a five-man front. Pitches to Cheevers. Very little there. 
Steve Jacobs on the stop. On the other hand, with the clock running under four minutes to go in the third quarter already, Darty would like nothing better than to pick up a few first downs and assert their ground game. Cheevers limps off the field after a gain of one. Second down and nine. They've got to get just inside the Shaw 46 for the first down. Two wide receivers again, no slot this time. High formation, strong side of the field to the short side. Nelson going to roll, throw, got a man down there, complete, and down at the seven-yard line, Lavelle Parker. Holy smokes, what a throw. Came back to the weak side and got him crossing the middle. What a great throw and what a great catch. What I like is how the play is set up behind the block of number 66, Jerome Morrison, who pulls, comes down the line of scrimmage and gives his quarterback that extra time and protection to make that long throw downfield. Watch number 66, set it up, goes deep. Same formation as the play before, just did the fake to the running back. The weak side was wide open. The wide receiver right down the middle of the field. Now the power I set. The give is to the tailback. Got a block down at the five and goes down inside the three. Cheevers, who limped off moments ago, all of a sudden got inspired and came right back in the ball game. He's still limping, but he didn't limp much when he went to that goal line. And he won't feel anything if he picks up another gain like he did in the first half. Cheever is one of those very durable backs for Darty. Second down and goal. Darty trying to assert itself here. In the red zone, two possessions, 14 points. The give is to Cheevers, and a helmet flies off in there. You're also going to get one of the up backs, Tommy. Bit of motion before the snap of the ball. Luke. Darty went for a wishbone type of formation. Lucas Melton lost his helmet. See the up back number 21, it looks like. He doesn't stop. That's amazing. Hey, I can play without a headgear. That's instinct. It is. Great effort by the young man. Five-yard penalty for motion. This is what drives coaches crazy. You get to the three, and then you have motion down there. Not in game 14. They don't like that much. Melton's stats. Shaw has probably six to seven players that all average about 30 35 tackles for the season. Very athletic up front. All of them were those number 90s. Nelson caught and thrown. Ball pops loose. Who got it? I think Darty recovered it back at the 17. I would bet you Coach C. Wright is gritting his teeth on the sideline. Nelson nowhere to go. They sent on a safety blitz. If you'll see the safety looped and came across the right side. And Nelson had nowhere to go. There he is. By that time, help had arrived. The ball pops out alertly. Darty on top of it. Robert Sanders with the recovery. Coach Wright is not a happy man right now. That's a long way from the three back of the 17 plus. Single setback. Nelson rolling, escapes trouble, looking, looking, still looking, throws, batted out of bounds. Emmanuel Dudley, number 90 for Shaw, was the first player into the backfield with pressure. Forced that play outside a little bit quicker than Darty wanted to run it. But an excellent stand. Give credit to the Shaw Raider defense for holding Darty out. Darty now going to attempt a field goal from here. It'll be a 34 yarder where they place the ball. They've been kicking the ball flat so long this afternoon, Tommy. It may look unusual to see that ball point to point. Well, Haywood Foggy is a straight on kicker, so let's see what kind of distance he has from the 34. Maybe they lay it flat for field goals as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Foggy and the Doherty Trojans going to call timeout here and get everything in readiness. If we are at the 17 yard line, it's going to be a 34 yard field goal. Let's go down to the sidelines 
Gerald Oliveri, what's going on on the sidelines? Uh, thanks a lot, Tommy. As you see right now, Hayward Foggy is about to get ready to kick this field goal, and I actually have his shoe right here, and as you can see, the toe is completely flat and extremely hard, so as he gets ready to kick this field goal, you'll see him kick it straight on, and this is something like out of the NFL circa 1950, extremely hard. I don't know which one is harder. Maybe the head is hard. I don't know. But we'll get ready to see as Hayward gets ready to kick this field goal. Back up to you, Tommy. Tommy, I know one of your favorite players was Lou the Toe Groza of the old Cleveland Browns. <laughs> That's the shoe that Lou Groza used to wear, number 76 in or your lineup. Mark Mosley, who was also a straight-on kicker. May have been the last of the straight-on kickers. There were some great ones. Soccer kickers have definitely changed the game. Bobby. Good snap. The kick is up. Thank you very much. From 34 yards, Mr. Foggy, nothing to this kicking it straight on thing, is there? Had a lot of hang time with that square toed shoe. I think those are back in style now. Let's take a look at this. Good snap. Patience. Good hold. I believe that's right down Main Street. Dead center. You can't kick it any better than that. He could make it a lot farther than 34. Put that in your memory bank if it gets close down at the end. The just, just over a minute left in the third quarter. It's a 10-point ball game now. Great kick, but you can't wear that shoe on campus. That is true. You have to take it off. <laughs> Square toe shoes may come back in. Well, he's back out there with it again. A soccer shoe on the left foot and a square toe shoe on the right side. And he's ready to do the lay down thing. I'm sure we're going to see this thing flattened again. Look how the elevation on that shoe is. That field goal, Tommy, may turn out to be very important for Doherty. Extended to a two score difference. We'll be entering the fourth quarter momentarily. Right, and Shaw. In a two-possession game, you feel like you're going uphill just a little bit. More mental than it is in reality. There's that bouncing kick again. Somebody's going to pick it up and run the little fake reverse. And get greeted at the 25-yard line. Excellent kick coverage. Demetrius Kendricks, number 42 for Darty. First man downfield in kick coverage. Brian Willis on the return. You have to feel real nervous if you're waiting on that kick. There's no way you could feel confident sitting and waiting down there on a kick like that. The bounce is unpredictable. You're looking at the ball as well as the coverage players. 47-yard scoring drive, five plays, two minutes, 27 seconds, and a 34-yard field goal by straight out kicker Haywood Foggy. Here's Shaw now. Cam Greathouse brings him up. Darty saying they have the football. Fumble. Let's wait on the officials. That play happened very quickly. You very saw the entire Darty defense jumping up and down, claiming they had recovered the football right at about the 28-yard line. Ground level. The handoff. Oh, my. Morrell Jones can't really tell. Turned him over, so it's hard to tell. Great house. Rolling, looking to throw. Got a man out in the flats out there. Justin Bray all the way up to the 38-yard line. Shaw trying to roll Great House to the left and then running a receiver across the line of scrimmage so that he has a shorter amount of distance to cover. This is another one of those key calls coming up. Third quarter comes to a close. We've played three, three down and one to go. Doherty 24, Shaw 14. Very quick third quarter. Well played, very crisp played third quarter as you mentioned. It's like we were on running time during that period. Doherty kept the ball a good portion of the time and there's been very little happening other than the field goal. Shaw now third down and about three. The give is to Bray up across the 35 and he gets the first down. Good surge by the Shaw offensive line up front as we head right into the fourth quarter. 
Morrell Jones, number 46 for Darty, one of the players we featured up top, had the responsibility from his linebacker position for the read, got there just a hair late as Shaw picks up a very important first down. Great block on the right side by the tight end that time. That surge really got it started off that right side for Bray. First down and 10 now for Shaw. They need to eat up some yardage here. Now they make the strong side of the field the right side. Quarterback on a roll and throw very little there. The very mobile Morrell Jones there to throw him down after a gain of only maybe a yard or so. Jones wears number 46 again reading the line of scrimmage followed the quarterback every step by the time he turned up field Jones just jumped him and stopped him for about a yard gain. Gain of one on the play that darty front four is about as athletic a front four as you will find. All of them basically the same size. And there are no real standouts, Tommy. And when you look at the tackling totals, nothing really jumps out at you. That tells me one thing. They can all hit. They definitely can. Still up there in that four-man front. Great house. Bart signal single setback. Gives it to Lamar Holland, who was really hit up across the 41-yard line. But again, a good surge by that Shaw offensive line. Number 21, Robert Sanders, is the defensive end for Darty. Basically worked his way down the line of scrimmage, got his head inside the traffic, and made the tackle. Third down and five, substitutions along that front four up there, bringing in a little more beef from the sideline, obviously. Playing a chess game between the front four and the front five of Shaw and Doherty here. Sanders, Sanders is flip-flopping now from left defensive end now to right defensive end. Right. Switching the strong side. The give is to Holland, and he's very close to a first down. Host of Doherty defensive players on that right side of the Doherty defense make the stop. Ball comes out of there, but... I think we're very close. Let's take a look at the offensive push here by Shaw, Mark. Excellent push. Watch number 21 in white work his way down the line of scrimmage and try to spin and get back in on the tackle. But there are a lot of Raiders downfield. Great offensive push by the Shaw line. And they've answered the bell here. Let's give Shaw a lot of credit here. This offensive line has really gone to work here in the last two or three minutes. They have to, as we're going to have a measurement right at the 46 and a half yard line. Either first and ten are going to be fourth and very short. Shaw in a two possession game down ten points, 24 to 14. Oh my. First down, yeah. Just by the nose of the ball. The decision for Shaw is how they manage the clock and decide to stick with the run. They need two scores. And they need them in the next nine plus minutes. Great house brings them up. Now Hardy, look at there, jumps up in a six-man front. And the give is to the tailback. And the bubble pops loose. Darty has already has it. If they rule it a fumble. Now I didn't hear a whistle up here, did you? Nor did I. The official has signal. It is Darty Ball. Let's take another look at that if we have it. Great surge by the Darty defense, seemed jumping to, up in there. Seemed to be a clean handoff, Tommy, as you look at it from ground level. There's the handoff. A lot of traffic in there, folks. And the closure. Well, you can see the ball starting to come out. Bodies flying around. Robert Sanders got his helmet and his shoulder pad up in there. Watch this. There it comes out. Arsenio Williams is number three. Seemed to be carrying the ball on his right hip. And as that Darty defense closed extremely fast, he made the recovery. Nelson brings them up. High formation. Two wide receivers. Two-step drop again. Look in pass complete down at the 32. Michael Nelson again. Can you say replay? Nelson to Nelson. How many times in the first half did we see that three-step drop? Simple look-in pattern to the tight end. And Nelson 
showing the ability not just to get downfield, but to make some very acrobatic catches for a tight end. I love the way this quarterback, Ronnie Nelson, just drops and throws. There's no hesitation whatsoever. The beauty is also, Tommy, he's hitting him in stride, so he's able to pick up additional yardage. They know where each other is at any given time. It's almost like they're counting. Nelson going to get to the tailback Cheevers, who's going to crack down inside the 30, down to about the 29-yard line. If Darty's displayed one ability so far, it's the diversity of their offense. Going to the tight end, using the running back, and when needed, going to the quarterback, Ronnie Nelson, to pick up the additional yardage. Golson and Melton. And that's good coaching, Mark. Second down and eight. Slot to the left. High formation. Strong side of the field is to the right. Nelson, toss sweep to the weak side. The Cheevers, and there's absolutely nothing there. Thanks to Emmanuel Dudley. Third down now and nine. Big Emmanuel came from his defensive line position. He's wearing number 90, as you mentioned. Worked the line of scrimmage perfectly, playing off the block. Watch him make the read right here and the hit. The pulling guard got there a little late. Deion Harper was number 61. He didn't pull quite enough. Slot left. Wide receiver right. Single setback in an offset position. Nelson. In hot pursuit. Uh-oh, big trouble here, folks. Nelson out of trouble, throwing away. Looking downfield for his tight end down there. Throwing in the vicinity of Sheffield. He might have dodged a bullet here for grounding. Nelson reversed field twice, going back to pass. You can see the penetration by the linebacking crew. Now he turns Houdini as he goes back the other way, switches hands with the ball, and then alertly gets it downfield in space for the incompletion, not losing any yardage. Goldston and Dudley in hot pursuit once more. Boy, Nelson was in grave danger. Fourth and nine. Which could have easily been a fourth and 30. They were very fortunate on that possession. Fourth and nine. Nelson looks over a four-man front. Fakes, throws to his tight end. Very close to a first down. I think he's got it. Yes. Sheffield, they ran that option again to freeze the linebackers, and the tight end just did a little down and out, about 10 and out. First down for the Darty Trojans. Jeremiah Golston, number 34, in coverage. You can see Golston to the right of your screen. Making the read on the play. Now, Golston gets into space, makes the hit, wraps up, but just too late to prevent the first down. Great hands by the tight end that time. Sheffield kind of kicked out to the right, found an open spot out there. Darty down there knocking on the door once more at the 20. Nelson going to get to Cheever's, got a block on the inside and goes down to the 13-yard line before Emmanuel Dudley had to turn around and go get him. Mr. Dudley has really been an active young man today. And what Shaw is managing to do, Tommy, is pick up nice chunks on first down. The cutback is what made the play for Darty. Great fullback lead block through there as Cheevers again limps to the sideline. Second down and three. Looks like Cheevers has those high top shoes on that a lot of players go to on the artificial turf. Second down now. And three. The ball's at the 13. Nelson gives to the tailback. Breaks a tackle or two. And another down to the five. Dominique Sheely on the carry. They don't lose much when they lost Cheevers going to the sidelines, do they? Number 91, Steve Jacobs, actually had penetration for Shaw with tackle right there by number 90 Dudley. Now you may see a little bit of fatigue setting in as the Shaw Raider defense has been on the field a long time on this drive. One broken tackle, two, three. Now the head-to-head -head confrontation in the red zone. Three times down there, 17 points. They're headed for more. The give is to the tailback. Breaks another tackle. Cracks inside the three. Sheely on the carry once more, number 30. Dominique Sheely 
Tommy, once again, number 90, Emmanuel Dudley for sure got in the backfield, just wasn't able to wrap up and make a tackle that would have been a loss. As it stands, Doherty inside the five yard line with the clock running, sensing that it has an opportunity to put this game away. Sheila out and Cheevers back in at the running back. High formation, wide slot to the left, tight inside of the field, here's to the right. Nelson looks over an eight-man front. Going to run the option and get down to the goal line. Very close, Ronnie Nelson. That's another part of that option that Darty has really just used to perfection today. Nelson decisive, and once he saw space, got inside the two-yard line, tried to extend the ball with the arm that he was carrying it in. As you look at it from ground level, Nelson extremely decisive. You can see the linebackers for sure trying to crowd the line. The fake to Cheevers. Watch the cutback. Right here. Sees a hole. Tries to get it in there. And right down at the goal line. About an elbow shy of the goal line. Third and goal. Nelson. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown Doherty. Ronnie Nelson for the score. This Doherty offensive line has really taken control here in the last 10 minutes of both halves. The Shaw defense has spent a lifetime out on that field, and it's very difficult to leave a defense out there. Foggy to kick. The kick is up, and the kick is no good. It's off to the left. So, Doherty now leads 30 to 14. Number four in your program is Ronnie Nelson from ground level now airborne and into the end zone. Nelson entered the ball game with 86 carries and a total of 674 yards. Also had 1,742 yards passing showing that he has the ability to lead his team downfield at a crucial time in the ball game and really ice this one from all appearances right now with 358 remaining. 56 yard drive, nine plays, two minutes and 19 seconds. Nelson on a one yard touchdown run. And by the way, that's his third touchdown today. Ronnie Nelson's had a great visit to the Georgia Dome on this Saturday. Ronnie Nelson with the hat trick. The first touchdown seemed to get him off track. The second touchdown was just sheer speed and the third, a little bit of power and the leaping ability to get into the end zone. Haywood Foggy will once more lay it down flat and kick it off. Justin Brave, Ryan White deep to receive, but where will the ball go? Now bounces it down past the 20. It's bouncing all over the place once more. And going to be picked up by Willis, who's going to run it all the way back up to the 25. Here's what Coach Flowers says he likes best about coaching. The camaraderie with, uh, with the coaches and the, and the idea that uh, you're, you're having some type of influence on the lives of the young men that you're working with. And in football and sports, that's one arena that you can see dividends right away. You don't have to worry about waiting 10 to 15 years down the road. I mean, that's, that's the single most important thing, knowing that you've had some kind of influence on the lives of these young men. Seven straight 10 win seasons for that man. He knows how to coach football. Penalty going to be called. Obviously a delay of game coming up here. Or maybe a substitution violation. Let's see. We'll wait on the official. Dead ball. Substitute infraction on the offense. Five yards. The thing I like about Coach Charles Flowers is the poise that he's demonstrated on the sideline all ball game long. You can see some leaders take a more emotional approach, but he's very focused, more analytical as a coach. And his team reflects that. They're very workmanlike. Great house. Throwing wide to the left. Incomplete. It was a forward pass intended for Lamar Holland. Time now, the enemy of Shaw. 3.46 left, second down, 15 yards to go, and they're down by 16. Doubling up on the total yardage of the ball game. Notice the totals for Darty. 
Doherty really went to work in the first half, 96 to 18 in the second half. Two to one in yardage. That'll get it done every time. Barring turnovers. Greathouse dropping the throw, pressure. Looks to his big tight end up around the 29 yard line. Bruce Figgins a little bit behind him up there at the 34. Good coverage by Doherty. Great pressure by the defense. At least Figgins as an offensive lineman, as you mentioned, Tommy, was open about 10 yards downfield. Just a simple out route. Ball thrown behind him. Robert Sanders in pursuit of Greathouse in the backfield. West Coast offense look. One set back, three wide receivers. Great house at his 15. Rolling, looking to throw pressure once more. Trying to throw and can't. Going to be caught and thrown back at the 15. Great pursuit by that Doherty defense once more. Number one, Daryl Brooks. Brooks. Daryl Brooks had first penetration, got into the backfield, and again shows the closing speed once. The house tried to get to the sideline. It is difficult for a left-handed quarterback to roll to his right, throw across his body. They flushed him the way they wanted him to go. Down to three minutes remaining, and Shaw's going to kick it away. Anderson stands at his own end zone. There is no return man for Doherty. Good snap, good kick. They're going to let it just bounce and roll as it will. Oh, no, somebody let the ball hit him. Tretavius Love Shaw has let it. the ball hit him up near midfield. I hope we can get another look at that. I did not see anybody back, and then all of a sudden, Love shows up and the ball hits him. Interesting sight was number 83 for Shaw. Nathaniel Jones came to the sideline as we look at a look at the replay. Ball just stolen away, but Jones had taken off his helmet. He blocked his pads. He's blocking, and it hits him off his pads. Yeah, it came down. He didn't know the ball was there. He was blocking. First down 10, Shaw now at the 50. Great house. Rolling pressured again. Throws out of bounds, incomplete. Trying to get Nathaniel Jones working on the sideline, but the point I was making earlier was that Jones came to the sideline after the last series, removed his helmet, took his pads out of his helmet, threw it away in disgust, not expecting Shaw to get the ball back. Now all of a sudden he's back in the game at a wide receiver position, so he had to get redressed and back on the field. Sanders once more with tremendous pressure from the left side. He has been in the Shaw backfield the entire second half. Second down and 10 now for Shaw. Incompletion stopped the clock. Now point to set once more. Going to run the draw. Nothing there. Maybe a gain of two as Lamar Holland spurts forward for a yard or two. Thomas with the stop. Interesting note that Shaw is sticking with a huddle formation in between plays. Third down and long here. Third and nine. Charles Flowers stopping one of his coaches from calling timeout. And then decides to call timeout. Two timeouts left on both sides of the ball. Darty doubled the yardage, doubled the time of possession, I'm almost certain. And when they got it going, they got it going. Another footnote, Tommy, what I've enjoyed about all the games played at the Dome, all these teams play the full timeout. There's no let up. Everyone is trying to score for pride. None of these teams have really given up, no matter where they've been on the scoreboard. That's true. This has been a war in the trenches. Coming up later today, coming up next, Washington, Wilkes, and Bowden, and that second Class A matchup, that's at three.
Coming up tonight at 6, DeCula, after their big upset at Camden County, will meet the Brookwood Broncos. That's tonight at 6. Then tonight, the finale, Lounge, the defending state 5A champions, will play host to Stevenson tonight at 9. Keep your dial right here. Third down and nine. High formation. Great house brings them up. Wide slot to the left. One wide receiver to the right. The toss sweep, and there's absolutely nothing there. The toss to Arsenio Williams. And the Doherty defense just penetrates, just really gets down in that three point stance. Morell Jones and just really brings the heat, Mark. Also, give credit to Xavier Burks, number eight for Doherty was in the backfield as soon as Arsenio got the toss. Fourth down and 11. Just over a minute left in this one. Darty will now meet Peach County for the state Triple A championship. And that should be a great matchup if you saw that earlier game today. The snap when Greathouse was not looking. Now he's going to kick the ball, attempt a safety. Did it make it to the end zone? Let's see. No, it did not. It went out of bounds at the three. Great house at the 25 yard line decided that this play is over. As you mentioned, tried the soccer style kick to the end zone. Flag oh. is down. We'll sort it out. He was not ready for that. Let's watch the technique on the kick. He approaches. Not bad technique. Not bad. He kind of went soccer style on that one, dragged the foot. And the bounce out of bounds. All right, the flag. Let's see what they're going to discuss about this one. Waiting on the officiating crew. And that's all Coach Flowers can do at this point is just shake his head in disbelief. That was simply miscommunication between the quarterback and center as he wasn't expecting the shotgun snap at the time it came. Just whiffed right past his shoulder. Yeah. Let's see what the official's going to call here. They're giving Doherty the option and I'm sure they're probably going to say it makes no difference right now. Just run the clock. 30 to 14 Doherty over Shaw in this one. Let's see what the flag says here now the official. They're really discussing this. You got any thoughts on this one. You you seen this play before this kind of play. Well my first observation was just on head coach Charles Flowers. You wouldn't know whether he's winning or losing based on his reaction on the sideline. Here's the play call. Let's see. I got motion, six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. We got an illegal kick here on the offense. Both penalties decline, take the ball at the two yard line, first down. First down, Doherty. An illegal kick. Here's Coach Charles Flowers on the sideline. And he's really has he has no expression about it. Just OK, let's go. First and goal, Doherty. You get to this point in the state semifinals. What can you be disappointed with? Your team has given it's all You've gotten this far. So what's the point of jumping up and down and screaming about it? Nelson brings him up. High formation. Takes a knee. Well, let me say this, Tommy, it's been fun working with you. It's been fun working with you, Mark. Uh, it's been my pleasure. It's been just a ball. We've really seen some great football games here at the Dome. We've got more coming up later today. Great matchups. And I believe Darty can end this thing here with one more taking of the knee by Ronnie Nelson, who has just had an outstanding football game today. And the Darty Trojans advance to the state championship game against Fort Valley, or rather against Peach County of Fort Valley. Now, Coach C. Wright, he wants that clock to run all the way down to zero before there's any celebrating. And the clock has expired. The Darty Trojans over the Shaw Raiders, 30 to 14. Darty advances to the finals against 
Peach County High School of Fort Valley. Doherty, of course, out of Albany. Great scene between the two coaches, both from Fort Valley State University. I wonder if they're discussing reunions. Well, it's a tremendous show of respect. It really is. These two teams have to respect each other. This has been a great football game. The 16-point advantage is not indicative of how the game went. Shaw went up 14-7 on a great run, and then Darty took control of the line of scrimmage. Great defense by Shaw, but when you get it rolling, you get it rolling. We expected a well-played game, and that's exactly what we got, Tommy. Sometimes you see coaches shake hands at the end of a game as a matter of courtesy. Those two coaches, they right, break. and Flowers, you could tell that was a heartfelt celebration of brotherhood. Doherty Trojans win it 30 to 14. What a great football game this afternoon. Let's go down to Gerald Oliveri on the sideline with the winning coach. Gerald? Thanks a lot, Tommy. I'm here with Coach C. Wright. Now, I understand you said you would never set foot inside the Georgia Dome until you took a team there. Now you're here and you won the game. That's correct. It's just thank, first of all, I'd like to thank the good Lord for blessing us and helping us to be here. Now, I also understand you attended Fort Valley State with Coach Flowers, and this will be his last game coaching. Any thoughts about Coach Flowers? Uh, I fear for him. The man has brought so much uh, to, the, to the Georgia High School Association in football and also baseball. A tremendous, talented uh, uh, individual, a great coach, and a very class act. You know, with coaching, he's going to miss it. All right, well, good luck coaching. Good luck. Congratulations on the win. Back up to you, Tommy. Thank you. What a class statement by Coach C. Wright. What a great game we've watched. Mark Lasseter, we have enjoyed a great football game. Doherty Trojans win it 30 to 14. Here are your matchups for the state championship. In the first game today, Peach County beat LaGrange 35 to 17. Doherty over Shaw. It's Peach County and Doherty now for all the marbles in AAA. Should be an outstanding game next weekend. Should be. Great athletes on both sides of the ball. We had a, we had a great time, folks. So long from the Georgia Dome.